Good morning, my name is Martin Hook, um, the course leader from the architecture program at RMIT University. Um, this morning we're speaking to Richard Blythe, um, director of Terroir and also at RMIT University as the head of School of Architecture and Design. Morning Richard. Martin. <laughs> the um, first thing I wanted to do was to maybe talk about this idea of you being both a practicing architect and an academic. Um, mm -hmm. And maybe talk about what the sort of synergies and challenges that that position uh, that you occupy raises and delivers. Yep, well, I mean, in terms of how it came about, it was uh, in, in a way a, a, a series of accidents and um, just moving all the time towards things that, uh, and ways of working that suited my personal interests, I guess. And at one fortuitous moment in time, meeting up with Scott uh, Scott Barnforth and Gerard Reinmuth, who are the other two terroir directors, uh, and discovering that they shared a similar ambition in terms of wanting to pursue an architecture that was not simply about commercial practice, but that began to investigate the discipline of architecture itself and to engage in broader social and cultural questions and issues. And uh, having those interests, those shared interests between the three of us, um, uh, we began to look at arch architectural models, practice models, that uh, were embedded somehow in academia. Um, both Gerard and I were involved in teaching. I was, at the time that we met, already a part-time academic, part-time practitioner. Um, and we went, we actually tossed it up a couple of different ways, you know, either me leaving academia completely it ended up uh, that we decided that it would be best if I moved entirely into academia but remain embedded within the way that Terroir works, working primarily with Gerard and Scott on projects. Um, what makes it work is that Gerard and Scott are very deliberate about inviting me back into the practice to do certain things. And those certain things range from um, getting involved in particular projects to looking at and thinking about the overall structure of the practice itself and that tends to be primarily what I do. I mean there are um, tensions that come up obviously in terms of splitting yourself across two different types of investigation. Um, one thing that has made it possible I guess is this argument that in fact practice that has as its ambition, the ambition that I outlined as being the one that was uh, upon which Terroir was founded, this idea that architecture as a practice can actually ask questions of society and of culture and can participate in what you might call a kind of research endeavour has made it possible to argue that in fact my engagement with the practice is entirely in and around those sorts of questions and therefore constitutes my uh, research activity and that that's sort of practically made it possible if you like. Because the practice isn't a straightforward practice in a traditional sense, is it? I mean, you're split between two cities and yep. three partners that are quite fluid in the manner in which they operate. Could yep. you maybe describe that a little? Yep. Well, uh, I mean, again, it, I guess it comes back to the way that we set the practice up. Um, when we set the practice up, we were setting it up as three Tasmanian architects, essentially. Uh, but we had a very big interest in engaging in the wider world of architecture and of ideas. And we decided that uh, in order to do that effectively, we needed to have some link to a bigger world outside of um, the Tasmanian context while maintaining a very strong um, presence in Tasmania because we f feel that that is you know, where we started, where we come from. So um, we rather ambitiously, with no work, set up two offices, one in Hobart and one in Sydney. And so that has been our structure from the very beginning an office in Hobart, an office in Sydney, and me somewhere else in academia, which over the history of the practice has been Launceston and then now Melbourne. So yes, the three directors have never geographically been located in the same city. Um, which are there is, benefits to that? Uh, yeah, there are great benefits. <laughs> <laughs> we really enjoy it when we get to spend time together. Uh, and we never get sick of each other's company. Um, but the, the one benefit that has really come through is the fact that when we design, um, a lot of the time what's going on is exchanges via email and it started off with fax actually, 
uh, and, and then move very quickly into email. Um, it means that we've had to explain very clearly uh, what it is that we're thinking when we communicate back to our fellow directors. It also means that when I get an email from Scott and Gerard, what I get is a digital file. It's not like um, uh, I'm getting a, a, an original sketch or something from Gerard or an original diagram from Scott or something. I'm, I'm getting an electronic copy. And that seems to have completely removed any question um, as to whether or not I can draw over the top of that or annotate that. And I think that's led to a, a way of practice that's very quick and very um, uh, uninterested in a way in the in the um, niceties of authorship that I think have been problematic in earlier forms of practice. You know, when what do you mean by that? Well, if um, if you're trying to practice as a collaborative, where it is a collaborative process, um, the, the the question of who authored the mark. Um, if that becomes an issue, you know, if there's some sort of ownership of that mark, it's very difficult for others to, to grab hold of it, pull it apart, redraw it, draw over the top of it, for example. But when it's a digital thing and you know the original sitting somewhere else, it's very easy to think that you can draw over the top of it. So I think that makes it a much more fluid process. So rather than the design process being one of um, uh, someone putting their idea on the table and then defending it, which is a more classical model, in fact, we had an employee from uh, Morales's office working with us for a while who described this very clearly. She said the big difference between the way you guys work and the way that other um, key European practices that she'd work with, including Morales, is that what happens in those offices is that people turn up with the idea at least um, resolved to the point where it can be defended. What we do is throw it on the table before we've even thought about it in a way so that it allows other people to pick it up and play with it. Do you think that there's a, um, do you think there's an Australianness about that attitude of, of that lack of preciousness or, or defensibility of, a, of an idea? I don't know, I've never, th I've never asked that question of myself. <coughs> um, uh, it's a good question, I'm, I'm not sure. The, but do you think do you well, think it is <laughs> when you work in a collaborative with two other directors as well? Yeah, I mean, I think that there's a um, there's certainly a, a notion of relaxation about about and a lack of possession mm -hmm. of an idea, and I think that it's generally other people try to sort of say whose is that or who drew that or is this a Hook project or a Nardell project yeah. or a Peterson project, you know, and, and, and I think that it's, it's difficult to sometimes explain or, or not necessarily explain, but get people to accept that yep. it's everyone, you know, mm -hmm. it's an IPH project or it's a terroir project, you yeah. know, it's, yeah. it's not tied to an individual. Well, that, that's very interesting. I mean, that happened to us too. People wanted to label us, so they wanted me to be the academic. They wanted Scott to be the steady, um, hands on the project, got this under control, and they mm. wanted Gerard to be the flamboyant Sydney designer. And at first, we kept trying to explain that well, it actually doesn't quite work like that. And yeah. sometimes, you know, Scott might be the flamboyant designer, Gerard might actually get the numbers right, and I might resolve <laughs> a technical detail. Uh, but we gave up because it's actually just much more straightforward to present the practice in the way people expect to see it, and then to just operate however we operate.